Boruto Two Blue Vortex has established one thing clearly, and that is Boruto is really, really strong. Since the first chapter of TBV, Boruto has dominated the series and taken the spotlight when fighting the likes of Code, Kawaki, and the Shinju villains. It's to the point where fans have noticed that Boruto has reached a power level that other side characters may not be able to reach, such as with Sarada in Mitsuki. In today's video, I wanted to give my thoughts about Boruto's character and why his incredibly high power level makes sense for the start of Two Blue Vortex. As we know at the end of Part 1, Boruto was forced to become a rogue ninja thanks to Kawaki invoking omnipotence. With him dying during the battle against Code and then Momoshiki reviving him, Boruto was turned into a pure Otsutsuki, eliminating any human genetics or DNA that he has left remaining. Three years later, after spending time with Sasuke and eventually Kashin Koji, Boruto has developed incredible techniques that has him as the clear strongest character amongst the new gen kids of Konoha. So the main question is, has Boruto become too strong? Well, in terms of how the rest of the main characters of Konoha have stacked up, the answer is yes. However, with the new enemies being introduced, such as with Hidari and Jira, the series is starting to take another steep climb in the average power levels for every character, aka power creep. While people may have some gripes with how fast characters amongst the new gen have gotten stronger, the common theme in the Naruto series is that the new generation will always surpass the older generation. Sure, there are some outlier characters such as with Madara and Hashirama, etc. But in terms of a generational standpoint, each era that has taken the reins of the ninja world are able to fight stronger enemies that are introduced. From the five Kage fighting the Edo Tensei to the new era Kage battling the Otsutsuki, it has become increasingly clear that the regular standard of power is dramatically rising. It's even more obvious in TBV with Konoha's kids fighting Jura and Hidari. And yes, these characters aren't able to take down Jura and Hidari as shown with Kawaki, Team 10, Himawari, and Sarada getting bodied by both. However, the fact that they are able to do something is noteworthy considering that these are the two strongest active villains we have seen in the series so far. And I have to personally admit, I was wrong about Sarada and Kawaki's current power levels as despite them getting stronger, they just weren't able to do anything fruitful to fight the Shinju, and I think it is naive to expect side characters like Sarada and Himawari to do anything of significance toward these characters simply because Jura and Hidari are part of a modified Tentails that was manipulated by Code's claw marks. Even after Himawari activated her Ninetales chakra power, this forced Jura to use only a little of his true power, meaning that there's not really anybody in the village that can fight these villains if Himawari can even put a dent into the Shinju. Now this doesn't mean that they are weak, it's just that they they are tasked with fighting the two strongest villains we have ever seen. And I know from the latest chapter and from the comments that I've seen from you guys, people aren't happy with the treatment of the side quest. But my question is, what exactly are they supposed to do? I thought Team 10 had to utilize their presence perfectly by using their teamwork in order to lure out Jura from the village and keep Himawari temporarily safe. They even stopped Jura from destroying the village with a Tentails Biju Bomb, which would have done catastrophic damage to Konoha. Mitsuki had a battle with Boruto where he unleashed his sage mode at full power for the first time in the manga, and even though he did lose, it forced Boruto to use ninjutsu and actually fight back. Kawaki has had multiple fights with Boruto and Jura where he clearly is out of his league as well. That being said, I thought the side cast did a solid job doing as much as they possibly can given the circumstances that they were put in. A fair critique I could give for Boruto part 1 in the manga was that the side cast was not really given enough screen time. It was more or less the Boruto and Kawaki show where it did make sense for the MCs to get this focus. However, it did put characters like Team 10 and even Mitsuki at the back burner. In 2 Blue Vortex, Kishimoto has given time for these characters to actually prove their usefulness when they have shown up. From Team 10 keeping Konoha safe, which ultimately worked in the end, to Mitsuki realizing that he has his own will and does not have to do everything for Boruto which mirrored onto Kawaki thanks to the omnipotence. The side characters in TBV has been given ample opportunity and I found it interesting to read knowing that they were faced off with an enemy that they had no chance of defeating. This even intrigues Jura who doesn't understand why these shinobi keep fighting despite understanding that there is a massive power difference between Konoha and the Shinju. You can't satisfy everyone but I think it makes sense how these characters have been utilized considering the power discrepancy that's presented in front of them. Now with Boruto coming to the rescue in the latest chapter, it's become clear that he is the only viable
viable option that is able to fight either Jira and Hidari. Now, the reason why I explain the uses of the side characters is because they are side characters after all. I don't think it's fair to expect these characters to do anything better than that, or else it will break the storyline if Sarada was able to defeat Hidari for example. For a character like Boruto, despite his insane ninjutsu dexterity and the new abilities that have been learned in the past 3 years, there is a clear weakness to his monstrous strength and that is the karma. There is a clear indication why Boruto doesn't use his karma and that's because he cannot control it out of fear that Momoshiki could take over his body. It's been shown only a few times but whenever Boroshiki appears, there is massive destruction that occurs and it's clear that Boruto doesn't want to waste his effort helping Momoshiki take over, given how strong Boruto has become in only his base form. Momoshiki having access to jutsu like Flying Thunder God and Rasengan Uzuhiko is something unfathomable to think about so Boruto is taking whatever precaution he can to prevent it. However, another weakness that has been discussed but hasn't been talked about amongst you guys in the comments and other platforms is Boruto's chakra consumption. When you think about it, Boruto has been fighting non-stop ever since he's made an appearance in TVV and outside of taking two chapters to alleviate his karma from appearing, Boruto has been fighting basically every single chapter. From Code, the Shinju, Mitsuki, and Kawaki, he has been put in constant battle without any break. At some point, Boruto has to reach his limit even with him using his karma. And even though Boruto is an Uzumaki that has deep chakra reserves, it's obvious that he has limitations to that DNA as shown with him only making a couple shadow clones at a time compared to Kid Naruto who can make thousands at once. Boruto has an alternative to this with him learning Kenjutsu, which does not force him to use much chakra, but if and eventually when he runs low on chakra, he will have no choice but to flee the battlefield in order to recover using Flying Thunder God or else Momoshiki will come out. These are the limitations that Boruto has to his power because he can't just keep throwing around jutsu without the risk of Momo appearing. Even with some of the jutsu he learned like Flying Raijin where Kashin Koji is giving him markers to teleport to via Toads to help Boruto maneuver the jutsu, indicating that he's still getting stronger as TBV progresses. That's why I find the complaints about TBV being too Boruto centric stupid because he is the main character. The manga has displayed what the other cast can do against these villains and while they have shown a bit of their strength, it's clear that they can't do anything without dying in vain such as Inojin recklessly trying to fight Jira. It kind of reminds me of Dragon Ball during the Namek Saga where the Z fighters were trying to battle the Ginyu force and Frieza's henchmen where eventually Goku came into the rescue and took down these characters. Boruto has taken inspiration from Dragon Ball when it comes to the paneling and battle scenes in terms of art so it wouldn't be the first time if this happened but this is how I see Boruto being utilized in Tube of Vortex. Establish the villains in the beginning and use the side characters to gauge their power level for the audience to understand how big of a threat these villains are. Another example of this would be the Pain arc where Pain destroyed everyone inside of Konoha until Naruto came in for the rescue. Similar stuff with Boruto and I personally love it because he is the main character of this series. At the beginning of part 1 in the manga, Boruto explained that he and Naruto would share the main character role. And with Naruto no longer here, Boruto has gracefully taken the role by being the savior and shinobi to protect the leaf from the shadows. Now he is in a position where he has no other choice but to fight back or else everyone in Konoha will die, like in the previous generations. Also, it's just not guaranteed for Boruto to take down Hidari or Jira in the next few chapters despite all of his insane powers that he gained in the past few years. I highly doubt Boruto could take down all of these characters on his own given that he escaped from the Shinju when they were first introduced in TVV, knowing that he doesn't have the power to take them all on. In a 1v1, we just have to wait and see if Boruto can finish the job, but given the limitations of his body and the Otsutsuki genetic makeup he has, this sets up for Momoshiki to finally come out in TBV if the opportunity presents itself. With Kashin Koji aiding Boruto to defeat the Shinju, I doubt Boruto is going to be this Gary Stu that saves the day and defeats every single villain, which has never been the case for his character in part 1 or until even now. Eventually, Kawaki will find a way to get to Boruto's level, as shown in the opening scene of the manga, as he keeps catching L's left, right, and center, where eventually he will snap from his low power levels in his quest to kill all of the Otsuskis, starting with Boruto. Even if there is a clear cap between the two, Kawaki will catch up sooner or later and Boruto will be forced to tap into higher powers such as mastering the Karma Seal and potentially even the Jogon. They are rivals after all that mirror a Naruto slash Sasuke dynamic, however this doesn't make any of the other characters lesser or feel insignificant such as with Sarada and Mitsuki. We've already seen Mitsuki battle using his Sage Mode and come to terms with his will of who exactly his son is. He understands his own will and what he has to accomplish now. For Sarada, she was put in a position that she had no chance of winning just 
just yet against Hidari. However, I think Sarada will play a huge role soon with her connection to Boruto and Hidari, as well as her using the Mangekyo Sharingan. But let me know what you guys think about this video in the comment section below. Do you agree with me? Has Boruto become too strong for your liking? And how do you feel about the side characters in Tube Blue Vortex so far? So if you like this video, hit that like button, subscribe, hit the bell as well, and have a good day. Peace. Thank you.